Alice was so frightened that she ran off at once in the direction the white rabbit pointed to. She came upon a neat little house, on the door of which was a bright brass plate with the name W. Rabbit engraved upon it. She went in without knocking and hurried upstairs and found herself in a tidy little room with a table in the window and on the table... Oh, there's a fan and some kid gloves. I'll take them to the white rabbit. Here's another little bottle. It doesn't actually say drink me as the other bottle did, but I think I'll drink some. I know something interesting is sure to happen whenever I eat or drink anything. So I'll just see what this bottle does. I do hope it'll make me grow large again, but really I'm quite tired of being such a tiny little thing. It did make her grow large again, and much sooner than she'd expected. Before she'd drunk half the bottle, she found her head pressing against the ceiling. That's quite enough. I hope I shan't grow any more. As it is, I can't get out at the door. I do wish I hadn't drunk quite so much. But it was too late to wish that. She went on growing and growing, and very soon had to kneel down on the floor. In another minute, there was not even room for this. And she tried the effect of lying down with one elbow against the door and the other arm curled round her head. I'm still growing. It's like being squashed in a doll's house. I'll have to put my right arm out of the window like this and one foot up the chimney over there. It's really very uncomfortable. Well, I seem to have stopped growing now anyhow. That's a good thing. But how shall I ever get out again? Miriam! Miriam, fetch me my gloves this moment. Oh dear, there's the white rabbit coming upstairs to look for me. Miriam! But he won't be able to open the door anyway. My elbow's pressed so hard against it. Oh, my fur and whiskers. I have to go round and get into the window. That you won't. Alice waited till she heard the rabbit just under the window. And she suddenly spread out her hand and made a snatch in the air. Oh, dear. It sounds as if the white rabbit has fallen into a cucumber frame or something. Pass! Where are you? Uh, oh. Sure, then. I'm oh. here. Uh, I'm digging for apples, Your Honor. Digging for apples, indeed. Here, come help me out of this. Uh, sure, and I will. This minute, Your Honor. Uh, no. No. Oh, oh, careful! Oh, oh, oh. There, there, Your Honor. Now, I just brush Your Honor down. No, never mind that. Uh, tell me, Pat, what's that in the window? Sure. It's an arm, Your Honor. An arm, you goose? Whoever saw one that size? Why, well, it fills the whole window. Uh, sure it does, Your Honor. Uh, but it's an arm for all that. Well, it's got no business there, at any rate. Go and take it away. It, take it away, Your Honor? That's what I said. Uh, sure, I don't like it, Your Honor, at all, at all. Do as I tell you, you coward. There was a long silence after this, and at last Alice spread out her hand again and made another snatch in the air. That's two more cucumber frames broken. I wonder what they'll do next. As for pulling me out of the window, I only wish they could. I'm sure I don't want to stay in here any longer. Now oh, hurry up with the ladders. Just you coming, Master. Well, where's the other ladder? Why, well, I hadn't to bring but one, sir. The builder lizard's got the other. Bill, fetch it here, lad. Aye, aye. It's a bit of a weight, like. Come along, come along. <laughs> now, now, let's be putting the ladder up at this corner. A bit of time together first, Pat. Uh, well, we sure. jar for you now. Oh, they'll do <laughs> well enough. Up onto the roof, you two. Bill, Pat. Oh, never let much of aid for heights. <laughs> now, who's to go down the chimney? Pat? I will not. You do it. <laughs> then I won't. Bill the lizard's got to go down. Bill, the master says you've got to go down the chimney. What? Me? Oh, so Bill's got to come down the chimney, has he? Why, they seem to put everything on Bill. I wouldn't be in Bill's place for a good deal. This fireplace is narrow, to be sure. But I think I can kick a little. She drew her foot as far down the chimney as she could and waited till she heard a little animal. She couldn't guess what sort it was, scratching and scrambling about in the chimney. Ah, this is Bill. Now what will happen if I just give one sharp kick up the chimney? Like this. Shh. It's Bill! Bill. 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 Catch him, Bill. Bill by the hedge! Hi, Master! 
Oh, I shot her across like a rocket, he did. Landing slap on old George. Pull up his head. Take a drop of this. Oh, don't touch him. How are you feeling, Bill? <laughs> what happened to you? Uh, tell us all about it, old fella. <laughs> oh, well, I hardly know. <laughs> uh, no, no more, thank you. I'm better now, but I'm a deal too flustered to tell you. All I know is something comes at me like a jack in a box and up on girls like a skyrocket. So you did, old fella. We must burn the house down. If you do, I'll set Dinah the cat at you. There was a dead silence instantly. Alice wondered what they would do next. After a minute or two, they started moving about again. And Alice heard the white rabbit say, A barrel full will do to begin with. A barrel full of what, I wonder? Oh! They're throwing pebbles at me now through the window. Oh! I'll soon put a stop to this. You'd better not do that again. Well, that seems to have stopped them. How extraordinary. All the pebbles on the floor are turning into little cakes. Now I wonder, if I eat one of these cakes, it's sure to make some change in my size. And as it can't possibly make me larger, it must make me smaller, I suppose. So she swallowed one of the cakes and was delighted to find that she began shrinking directly. As soon as she was small enough to get through the door, she ran out of the house and found quite a crowd of little animals and birds waiting outside. The poor little lizard Bill was in the middle being held up by two guinea pigs who were giving it something out of a bottle. They all made a rush at Alice the moment she appeared, but she ran off as hard as she could and soon found herself safe in a thick wood. Now the first thing I've got to do is to grow to my right size again. And the second thing is to find my way into that lovely garden. Yes, I think that will be the best plan. At present I'm only about three inches high. I suppose I ought to eat or drink something or other. But the great question is, what? Alice stretched herself up on tiptoe and peeped over the edge of a mushroom. And her eyes immediately met those of a large blue caterpillar. It was sitting on the top of the mushroom, with its arms folded, quietly smoking a pipe with a long tube called a hooker. Alice and the caterpillar looked at each other for some time in silence. At last the caterpillar took the hooker out of its mouth and addressed her in a languid, sleepy voice. Who are you? I, I hardly know, sir, just at present. At least I know who I was when I got up this morning. But I think I must have been changed several times since then. What do you mean by that? Explain yourself. I can't explain myself, I'm afraid, sir. Because I'm not myself, you see. I don't see you. I'm afraid I can't put it more clearly, for I can't understand it myself to begin with. And being so many different sizes in a day, it's very confusing. It isn't. Well, perhaps you haven't found it so yet. But when you have to turn into a chrysalis, you will some day, you know, all caterpillars do. And then after that into a butterfly, I should think you'll feel a little queer, won't you? Not a bit. Well, perhaps your feelings may be different. All I know is, it would be very queer to me. Who are you? I think you ought to tell me who you are first. Why? Well, I... Anyhow, as you seem to be in such a very unpleasant state of mind, I'll go away. Come back. I've something important to say. Very well. Keep your temper. Is that all? No. Well? So you think you're changed, do you? I'm afraid I am, sir. I can't remember things as I used. And I don't keep the same size for ten minutes together. Can't remember what things? Well, I've tried to say, how doth the little busy bee, but it came all different. Recite, you are old, Father William. I'll try. You are old, Father William, the young man said, and your hair has become very white. And yet you incessantly stand on your head. Do you think at your age it is right? In my youth, Father William replied to his son, I feared it might injure the brain. But now that I'm perfectly sure I have none, why, I do it again and again. You are old, said the youth. One would hardly suppose that your eye was as steady as ever. Yet you balanced an eel on the end of your nose. That is not said right. Not quite right, I'm afraid. 
It is wrong from beginning to end. Oh. What size do you want to be? Well, I should like to be a little larger, sir, if you wouldn't mind. Three inches is such a wretched height to be. It is a very good height indeed. I'm exactly three inches high myself. But I'm not used to it. You'll get used to it in time. And the caterpillar put the hooker into its mouth and began smoking again. In a minute or two, it took the hooker out of its mouth oh, oh. and yawned once or twice oh. and shook itself. <laughs> then it got down off the mushroom and crawled away into the grass, merely remarking as it went, One side will make you grow taller and the other side will make you grow shorter. One side of what? The other side of what? Of the mushroom, of course. And in another moment, the caterpillar was out of sight. Well, if the mushroom is perfectly round, how can it have two sides? I'll break off one piece here, and another piece here, and now, which is which? She set to work very carefully, nibbling first at one piece of mushroom and then at the other, and growing sometimes taller and sometimes shorter until she succeeded in bringing herself to her usual height. Then suddenly she saw an open place with a little house in it about four feet high. Whoever lives there, it'll never do to come on them this size. Why, I should frighten them out of their wits. So she began nibbling at the right-hand bit of the mushroom again and did not venture to go near the house till she brought herself down to nine inches high. For a minute or two she stood looking at the house and wondering what to do next when suddenly a footman in livery came running out of the wood. Well, he's dressed like a footman, but judging only by his face, I'd have called him a fish. The fish footman rapped loudly at the door. The door was opened by another footman in livery, with a round face and large eyes like a frog. Both footmen had powdered hair that curled all over their heads. The fish footman began by producing from under his arm a great letter, nearly as large as himself, and this he handed over to the frog footman. For the Duchess, an invitation from the Queen to play cloakie. From the Queen. An invitation for the Duchess to play cloakie. Then they both bowed so low that their curls got entangled together. <laughs> then the fish footman went away, and the frog footman sat on the ground near the door, staring stupidly up into the sky. Alice went timidly up to the door and knocked. There's no sort of use in knocking. Oh, why not? For two reasons. First, because I'm on the same side of the door as you are. And secondly, because you're making such a noise inside, no one could possibly hear you. Please, then, how am I to get in? There might be some sense in your knocking if we had the door between us. For instance, if you were inside, you might knock and I could let you out, you know. It's very rude of him to keep looking up into the sky all the time he's speaking to me. But perhaps he can't help it. His eyes are so very nearly at the top of his head. But at any rate, he might answer questions. How am I to get in? I shall sit here till tomorrow. At this moment, the door of the house opened and a large plate came skimming out straight at the frog footman's head. It just grazed his nose and broke to pieces against one of the trees behind him. But I shall sit here till the next day, maybe. How am I to get in? Are you to get in at all? That's the first question, you know. It's really dreadful the way all the creatures argue. I shall sit here on and off for days and days. But what am I to do? Anything you like. Oh, there's no use talking to him. He's perfectly idiotic. I shall open the door and go straight in. The door led right into a large kitchen, which was full of smoke from one end to the other. The Duchess was sitting on a three-legged stool in the middle, nursing a baby. The 
cook was leaning over the fire, stirring a large cauldron that seemed to be full of soup. Achoo! Achoo! There's certainly too much achoo, pepper in that soup. There was certainly too much pepper in the air. Even the Duchess sneezed occasionally, and the baby was sneezing and howling alternately without a moment's pause. The only things in the kitchen that did not sneeze were the cook and a large cat which was sitting on the hearth and grinning from ear to ear. Please, Duchess, would you tell me why your cat grins like that? It's a Cheshire cat, and that's why. Pig! Oh! What's the matter? I thought you called me a pig. I was speaking to the baby. Pig! I didn't know that Cheshire cats always grinned. In fact, I didn't know that cats could grin. They all can. And most of them do. I don't know of any that do. You don't know much. And that's a fact. Oh. While Alice was trying to think of something to say, the cat took the cauldron of soup off the fire and at once set to work throwing everything within her reach of the Duchess and the baby. The fire arms came first, and then followed a shower of saucepans, plates and dishes. The Duchess took no notice of them even when they hit her, and the baby was howling so much already that it was quite impossible to say whether the blow hurt it or not. Oh, please, Cole. Please mind what you're doing. Oh, no, be careful. That saucepan nearly carried off the baby's precious nose. If everybody minded their own business, the world would go round a deal faster than it does. Which would not be an advantage. Just think what work it would make with the day and night. You see, the Earth takes 24 hours to turn round on its axis. Talking of axes, chop off her head. Alice glanced rather anxiously at the cook to see if she meant to take the hint. But the cook was busily engaged in stirring the soup wow, and did wow, not seem to be wow, listening. Wow, 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 then wow, the Duchess wow, began nursing wow, her child again, wow, singing a sort of lullaby to it as she did wow, so, and giving it a violent shake at the wow, end of every line. Wow, wow. Speak roughly to your little boy and beat him when he sneezes. He only does it to annoy because he knows it teases. Wow, 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 wow. I speak severely to my boy. I beat him when he sneezes. For he can thoroughly enjoy the pepper when he pleases. Wow, 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 wow. Here, you may nurse the baby a bit if you like. Catch! Oh! I must go and get ready to play croquet with the Queen. See you later. The cook threw a frying pan after the Duchess as she went out, but it just missed her. Alice had managed to catch the baby with some difficulty and took it out of the house into the open air. What a funny, queer-shaped little creature. It's holding out its arms and legs in all directions, just like a starfish. And snorting like a steam engine, and wriggling so much I can hardly hold it. Don't grant, that's not at all a proper way of expressing yourself. What's the matter with you? You certainly have a very turn-up nose. Much more like a snout than a real nose. And your eyes getting extremely small for a baby. Altogether, I don't like the look of you at all. If you're going to turn into a pig, my dear, I'll have nothing more to do with you. Mine now. Good gracious, you are a pig. There's no mistake about that. Well, it would be quite absurd to carry you any longer. There. Off you go. What a relief. It's trotting quietly away into the wood. Now, if you'd grown up, it would have made a dreadfully ugly child. But it makes rather a handsome pig, I think. And Alice began thinking over other children she knew who might do very well as pigs, when she was a little startled by seeing the Cheshire cat sitting on a bough of a tree in a few yards off. The cat only grinned when it saw Alice. Cheshire Puss, would you tell me please which way I ought to go from here? Well, that depends a good deal on where you want to get to. I don't much care where. Well, then it doesn't matter which way you go. So long as I get somewhere. Oh, you're sure to do that, if you only walk long enough. Oh. What sort of people live about here? In that direction lives a hatter. And in that direction lives a match here. Visit either you like. They're both men. But I don't want to go among mad people. Oh, you can't help that. We're all mad here. I'm mad. You're mad. How do you know I'm mad? Oh, you must be. Or you wouldn't have come here. I don't think that proves it at all. Anyhow, how do you know that you're mad? To begin with, the dog's not mad. You grant that? I suppose so. Well, then, 
You see, a dog growls when it's angry and wags its tail when it's pleased. Now, I growl when I'm pleased and wag my tail when I'm angry. Therefore, I'm mad. I call it purring, not growling. Call it what you like. Are you playing croggy with the Queen today? I should like to very much, but I haven't been invited yet. <laughs> You'll see me there. The Cheshire cat suddenly vanished. Alice was not much surprised at this. She was getting so used to queer things happening. While she was looking at the place where it had been, it suddenly appeared again. By the by, what became of the baby? I've nearly forgotten to ask. It turned into a pig. I thought it would. And the cat vanished again. Alice decided to visit the March Hare. I've seen hatters before. The March Hare will be much the most interesting. And perhaps as this is May, it won't be raving mad. At least not so mad as it was in March. As she said this, she looked up, and there on the branch of a tree was the Cheshire Cat again. Oh! Did you say pig? A oh, fig? I said pig. The baby turned into a pig. And I wish you wouldn't keep appearing and vanishing so suddenly. You make me quite giddy. All right. And this time the cat vanished quite slowly, beginning with the end of the tail and ending with the grin, which remained some time after the rest of it had gone. Well, I've often seen a cat without a grin, but I've never in all my life seen a grin without a cat. <laughs>